A think tank says the reports of American retirement crisis are off the mark. This is a couple years old from CNBC, but I want to share it with you because I was reading an article uh, someone sent to me about uh, the retirement crisis and uh, just well, was some guy had written for Town Hall. <laughs> He's saying we need a government bond that pays a guaranteed 5% a year. And I said, I said, man. A guy at Town Hall, Town Hall is pretty conservative. Like, why or is a guy writing at Town Hall recommending more government debt to fund people's retirement because of the undisputed retirement crisis, this guy said. And he referred us to the Federal Reserve Board of St. Louis. And the Federal Reserve Board of St. Louis had other people disagreed with the assumption, which is this article about a retirement crisis. But the guy who had written the article said, it's undisputed. There's a retirement crisis. Just, I can't take it. But anyway... Uh, this is CNBC Dateline, July 7th, uh, 5th, 2017. While one study found, and I haven't read this article, I have not read this article. I have a, we'll, we'll, have, we'll go into it. While one study found 88% of Americans fear a retirement crisis, another found that 74% of retirees are currently living comfortably. Some, some studies find average retiree incomes match or exceed pre-retirement incomes. Facts often get lost amid ideology, partisan politics, and beltway power struggles. Yeah, you think? All right, so let's go down here. These days, hardly anyone believes the American retirement dream is doing all right. In fact, 88% of Americans agree that the nation faces a retirement crisis. According to a survey by the National Institute of Retirement Security Pension Research Group. Hmm. Who is the National Institute of Retirement Security? Let's take a gander. I haven't looked these guys up. Let's take a look, shall we? So I'm going to pause it for just a second. To duck, duck, go. We won't go to Google because we can't trust the, the Google result page, the search engine results page. And if you can trust them, you haven't been paying attention. So we're going to go to duck, duck, go. National Institute of Retirement uh, Security. And let's see here. Whenever I hear retirement security, I think annuities. And I have a sneaky suspicion this is going to be annuities. Let's right, see who these guys are and who funds them. Um, teacher Retirement in Maryland. The pension fund. I don't know what these teachers retirement systems. Uh, I got a teacher. I don't know what this retirement board calpers okay calcers aarp all right so calpers te uh teacher retirement system so i'm not sure who the, what these groups are but i bet there's got to be more than that so let's see if we can't find uh, membership let's go to about and see who the funding folks board of directors all right let's see what we got board of directors I get, uh, okay. Well, I don't know. I, my bet would be that these are funded by insurance companies. Um, I know, I guarantee T.I. Krev is going to be in here, but uh, well, let's see real quick. Is this a foundation? Yeah, education. Found, let's see here. All right. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I can almost guarantee uh this is founded by uh, this is funded by insurance companies let's just look at membership real quick i guess that's how you can educational summer volunteer visionary director circle which i have okay all right yeah i don't know i'm gonna assume it's not as uh it's funded by the insurance industry because the insurance industry is pushing annuities and what they're doing is they're trying to get annuities on 401k plans so they can sell annuities to the uh unwary public to say annuities are great and what annuities economists think annuities are just good old-fashioned income annuities what insurance people per, uh, are talking about are not just income annuities they're talking about all kinds of annuities uh good bad and otherwise for sure and the insurance company the reason they want to get the 401ks allow annuities because that's where all the money is that's fact and what happens are that they can encourage enough people that there's a retirement crisis and the way to solve it with the economists on board to say uh, annuities and guess what who's the biggest beneficiary of that insurance companies all right however a small but vocal group of scholars is advancing an opposing viewpoint of the retirement crisis they say americans chance for financial security and retirement are in better shape than is commonly supposed so is it possible 
That the retirement crisis is oversold is not nearly merely possible. It's probable, says Amer Andrew Biggs. I figured it might be him uh, with the AEI, American Enterprise Institute. And he was a former deputy commissioner for the Social Security Administration. For one thing, he notes that while many contend low earning Americans aren't saving enough for retirement, poverty is lower during retirement than during people's working years. So low income people aren't saving enough, i.e. people close to poverty, and yet poverty drops in retirement than it does during the working years. Could FICA have something to do with that? Uh, 2016 Census Bureau report show that in 2015, just 8.8% of people 65 and older were impoverished, compared to 19.7% of children under 18 and 12.4% of 18 to 65 years old. That's a pretty significant drop off. If there were a crisis, Big says, Retired people should be complaining. Yet a Gallup poll in 2016 found 74% of U.S. retirees say they are living comfortably. And Vanguard found that 16% of retirees were dissatisfied with their financial situation. That's in 2017. Just 16% according to Vanguard. Compared with 21% of pre-retirees. Hmm. Perhaps most surprisingly, Biggs points to recent research suggesting retiree incomes generally match or even exceed their pre-retirement incomes. A uh, 2017 study by the IRS and the ICI, the Investment Company Institute of Investment Company of Institute, IC, IC, Investment Company Institute, yes, yeah, the uh, the mutual fund trade group. Uh, researchers analyzed tax returns and found most people experienced no income drop-off after claiming Social Security. In fact, the median household's income rises after retirement. Hmm. No income drop-off after claiming Social Security. Why? Because they have Social Security with no longer income tax and no more FICA and no more retirement account contributions. It's hard to paint a picture, paint a picture where this leads to a true retirement crisis, says Biggs. Retirement policy can get tangled up in ideology, uh, partisan politics, and bellway power struggles. Presumably, those concerns would not influence a Canadian such as Frederick Vatiz, who's the actuary of the Toronto-based human resource advisor uh, and author of a, the Essential Retirement Guide, A Contrarian's Perspective. Vatizzi also doubts the retirement crisis. The retirement crisis has definitely been oversold, he says. A good indication of this is that pre-retirees have a highly, uh, pre-retirees have significantly a higher level of concern about where they are financially prepared for retirement than is the case for retirees. Buttressing his point is a 2017 Vanguard study that found 10% of U.S. pre-retirees consider their financial situation to be in crisis with just 4% of retired people. He says those who warn of crisis are based on concerns on highly uh, flawed estimates of what a comfortable retirement costs. I mean, here, here. The GAO in 2015 examined competing claims for existence of a retirement crisis and agreed that varying estimates of post-retirement spending needs ex needs explain most of the disagreement. Eggs, and there's old Pablo chewing one of his toys. Josh, you're not professional enough. You shouldn't have dogs in the background. I'll have Pablo anywhere I want because I love the little monkey. I love him. A GAO article examined competing claims for the existence of a retirement crisis and agreed that the varying estimates of retirement spending needs explain the difference. Yep. Or the difference in agreement. In general, financial planners say retirees need about 70% of pre-retirement income in fact, the National Institute of Retirement Security uses 85% as a benchmark. Man, it's just... <laughs> the National Institute of Retirement Security uses 85% as a benchmark. Man, who... Uh, who hold on. I got, hold on a second. The first thing I did, I, I can't tell who funds these guys. I just know a lady who's the executive director was a chief of staff for uh, Earl Pomeroy, who is a congressman in North Dakota, Democrat. It's just the way all these guys are. They're all from D.C., all part of the swamp. Uh, but anyway, I saw this right here. Retirement insecurity. American views, and this is from the National Institute of Retirement Security. New public opinion research find that Americans are united in their concern about retirement. In overwhelming numbers, Americans say the nation faces a retirement crisis. With Democrats at 80%, Republicans at 75%, and Independents at 75%. I wonder why they think that. Well, because they keep pushing this crap out, the, out there. Anyway, so what? Uh, uh, new research find 95% of millennials not saving enough. Ah! 
But then watch this. Watch, watch, watch. So what we see here is this right here. This is what life without retirement savings looks like. And it's on the Atlantic, a big lib rag. And so Atlantic, who they cite? They cite the National Institute of Retirement Security. It's all fake. It's all fake. The continuing retirement cr savings crisis, according to Neri Re, uh, I wonder if she's, uh, yeah, I wonder if Re, isn't that the lady who used to run the D.C.? school was it michelle re i can't remember because sworn it was and they she was a big lib but she was for vouchers and they ran her out of town but anyway um isn't that funny though so i don't trust these guys as far as i could kick them so just be advised if it's from the national institute for retirement security and they're using an 85 percent benchmark it's all fake news but t says this analysis shows even the lower figures are too high and the case, lower figures being 70 percent for the financial planners in the case of this typical middle-income household, that paid off a mortgage, raised children, and made the usual payroll deductions. The real target is closer to 50%. Here, here, brother. That's right on. Although those who disregard the retirement crisis warnings can muster great assurance in quantities of data and analysis to support their views, crisis defenders are well-equipped with stats. It's as serious as it could be, says Alicia Munell. Uh, who pr produces regular topics on the topics. You know why? Because they're all feeding at the same trough. They're all wanting DC money, the NIRS. Why do they have an executive director from a political group? Because it's all political, all political. Uh, who do you think, Alicia Munell, where does she get a lot of her funding from? The Social Security Administration. Munell says poverty is a poor benchmark and that a, ben and a better uh, measure uh, would measure the degree in which retirement would mean a less comfortable lifestyle. Poverty is a poor benchmark, and then a better one would measure the degree in which uh, retirement would, would mean a less comfortable lifestyle. About half of today's working age households are at risk for not being able to maintain their standard of living in retirement. Well, hell, I'm at risk, and I'm fine with that because my standard of living inherently would go down, Alicia. <sighs> what else says two powerful factors derive the shortfall. First, people need more retirement income. Let me guess, health care. Yep. Because we're living longer, retiree health care costs can continue to grow and interest rates remain low. And people have less income from traditional sources. I, 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 I'm losing, I'm starting to doubt Alicia Monell, which is, uh, which is too bad. I've always liked the studies they do here, but this is, this is just silly. Retiree health care costs do grow, but they're, starting, they're growing from a very, very low number. I, I'm starting to doubt those guys over there. Uh, if it's from academia, uh, where they're feeding off the trough, the government teat, so to speak, I'm I'm really starting to doubt these guys. Social Security benefits have already been effectively cut by raising the full retirement age to 67 from 65, she explained. And fewer workers today can join defined benefit plans. Well, only less than half ever did on its peak. So stop with that. Stop with that. She just... Uh, and, but they don't talk about the increasing taxes or the increased benefits either. It's just the whole thing is just such a freaking fraud. All right, so they raised the full retirement age. Well, we knew that a long time ago, and they're going to raise it again because we're living longer. Thus, we should say you got you don't get as much in actuarial benefits of Social Security. Monell suggests falling post-retirement spending, as uh, as Vatiz describes, occurs because retirees can't afford to spend more. That's the Jonathan Clemens stuff. While it's true that spending declines as people age, this pattern may simply track declining income rather than actual, prefer than actual preference. But that's not what the freaking studies say. The studies say that people are very comfortable in retirement. So again, if Monell, and here we go, Teresa Ghirardelli, uh, a labor economist, director of the New School, a big lefty socialist, if it's truly a retirement crisis, the people would say it's a crisis. And here's what. The pattern, this is what Jonathan Clemens said when uh, Ty Bernanke's article in 2005 when I read it from the Journal for Financial Planning. Well, the reason people spend less is because they run out of money. And there's no evidence of that. Where is the flipping evidence of that? She says, well, it's true that spending declines as people age, this pattern may simply track declining income rather than an actual preference. Well, declining income because you make less income because you need less income to live on. Ah, it's all just fake. They're fake. They're trying to scare you so you can give more taxpayers for these money, these people to give this more left-wing bureaucratic nonsense. Uh, Garrett Geldy says the real crisis is of downward mobility, not poverty. Members of the middle class will experience downward mobility and end up near poverty in retirement. Okay, simply not happening. So how do you justify that? How do you, I just, why wouldn't you not ask these people, whoever asked these people, well, how come the people are saying that's not happening to them? That, 
Only a minority of independent rigorous researchers consider that a retirement savings are adequate. I like how they say only a minority of independent and rigorous, essentially. What, what, who? So these are our captive audience. And again, I love how if it's a majority, uh, as if science or any kind of behavioral stuff is debatable for uh, the, the majority. So if Teresa and her crew of government funded people who I, Eisenhower warned about have a, my, a majority of 50 plus one, that means they're right. This whole thing appealed to the authority. They can sense that it's breaking the same. Only a minority of independent and rigorous researchers so because basically assuming everybody else is not independent rigor I've, man i've seen this on climate science i've seen this on freaking car stuff i've seen this on vaccines if you don't agree with me you're not independent and rigorous uh and you're a minority most scholars do not think so she said pointing to the goa gao report that examined a number of efforts to research whether americans have saved enough for retirement the studies generally found that about one third to two thirds of workers are at risk of falling short of this target well hell this target is 85 percent of pre-retirement income fool you will be i'm sick of just one second. Uh, that lady drives me crazy. It's all big government propaganda. Both sides believe some of the problems problems are around the reporting of the retirement crisis. So again, don't forget, she's going to say that most scholars, and she's going to say my man Vatisi is not a scholar. That's what she's going to say. All these vendors make a lot of money when they say there's a crisis and we'll help you get out of it. Both sides believe some of the problems around the reporting of the retirement crisis derive from profit-motivated financial firms and credulous financial journalists. They are the source of the viewpoints they disagree with. Uh, and Biggs agrees, but I would say the freaking the scholars get the same thing. They get funding from the government to promote the crisis in which to say we need more money to study the crisis. Uh, what, the, what is the chance that a company that makes its business by selling retirement savings products is going to tell you that you're saving too much for retirement? They're not lying. Yeah. They believe in their product, but people are credulous about this, particularly in the media. I mean, freaking, it's all just a scam. It's all such a scam. They're all lying. Alicia Mano, I just, I'm disappointed. I mean, I've been following her for a long time. I just, uh, I'm disappointed, man. I shouldn't be. I mean, I've, I've been cynical enough to know this is the, what, you know, this is part of the course for these people, but <sighs> reports of retirement crisis are off the mark. So let's see what my man, uh, this guy's book is here, uh, Vatisi, The Essential Retirement Guide. So let's look up, let me pause it real quick. All right, so here's my man, Frederick Vatisi's book, and it looks like he has an update, 2015. And uh, let's just take a look. I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, saving time. Okay, let's see. I'm just, let's look at some of the comments. Um, now nah, I don't have, I don't feel like reading all this, but uh, we'll, uh, I might buy this. It should come as good news. The industry may be wrong. There's Andrew Biggs right there. Huh. Well, now we got him. Uh, that's fantastic. Essential book for those planning the retirement. Good job. Waste of money. Way too many actuary numbers and far too little application. Nothing if you're a low or middle income. There are a lot of better books out there. And this guy says, something in France. Not worth the money, says Catherine Valentine. Boring. Mostly solid general advice with a few weeks. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to buy this book. So good job. I'm going to see if I can't find this guy and interview him because i love it anyway so there you go so no retirement crisis enjoy it love your life be grateful we'll see you